and the Queen, written by Caroline L. Perry, illustrated by Lydia Corey. Elizabeth of York wasn't a storybook princess. Her younger sister, Margaret, loved playing dress-up in their mother's fancy gowns and twirling around her room in a diamond tiara. But Elizabeth was happiest wearing normal clothes and playing fetch with the family's dogs, Dookie and Jane. She spent afternoons at the stable grooming her Shetland pony, Peggy. You should have been a farm girl instead of a princess, Margaret teased. When Elizabeth was only 11 years old, her life changed forever. Her father was crowned King George VI. The family moved into the grandest house in the nation. Buckingham Palace was a cold, drafty place. The floorboards creaked when Elizabeth, Margaret, and the dogs snuck off to explore the 775 rooms. They peeked into echoey chambers with ornate ceilings and gaped at portraits of royal ancestors adorning the walls. They were scared to touch the priceless antique furnishings. It was a truly magnificent residence, but it certainly wasn't homey. People bowed and curtsied in King George's presence. Everyone called him Your Majesty. He was just Papa to Elizabeth, but Papa said that his little Lilibet would have to get used to all the fuss. Someday, she would be queen. The king and queen traveled the world. They went away for weeks, sometimes months at a time. Elizabeth and Margaret stayed behind. A queen-in-waiting was expected to be perfect at all times, but Dookie and Jane didn't have to worry about being proper. The feisty Pembroke Wish corgis had no regard for royal rules. They barked at the princess's stern governesses. They chased past servants around the great halls and wrestled when world leaders came to visit. Elizabeth wished that she, too, could go wild sometimes. When Elizabeth was 13, World War II broke out in Europe. For their safety, the princesses were sent away from London to Windsor Castle. The king and queen stayed at Buckingham Palace. Even in their new home, Elizabeth and Margaret often woke to the loud shrill of air raid sirens. They huddled together in the underground vaults of the castle behind hat boxes and cookie jars that hid the priceless crown jewels. It was freezing cold, and the girls were lonely and scared. The dogs never left their sides. War was still raging when Elizabeth turned 18. Papa told her she could choose any gift her heart desired. You must ask for a car, Margaret urged. Fine jewelry fit for a princess. Mama suggested. A new royal title, palace advisors proposed. Elizabeth asked for only one thing. I want a puppy of my own, she declared. The princess got her wish, a corgi puppy she named Susan. Elizabeth's heart swelled when she cuddled the tiny dog. It wasn't easy for a future queen to make friends. At last, she had her very own constant companion. Susan was small but rambunctious. She loved to show off her herding skills. There weren't any sheep at the castle, so she rounded up squirrels. When enemy planes flew overhead, she growled and guarded the princess like a precious lamb. Elizabeth was captivated by the little corgi. She hand-fed her from a silver platter and walked her twice each day. She told Susan stories and stroked the puppy's soft belly. The princess had learned to bury her emotions, but somehow Susan knew exactly how she was feeling. The corgi nuzzled close when Elizabeth argued with her sister. Susan dropped toys at the princess's feet to cheer her up during long, boring lessons on constitutional history. She comforted her companion when the sounds of battle kept them awake at night. Having Susan at her side gave Elizabeth courage. 
she pleaded with Papa to let her join the war effort. It isn't fitting for a future queen, royal advisors wailed. I'm not an ordinary princess, Elizabeth insisted, and I have no intention of being an ordinary queen. She knew that she had to help her country. Eventually, the king relented and Elizabeth joined a women's regiment. She learned how to be a mechanic and she drove military trucks and ambulances. She became an expert at changing tires and fixing engines. Elizabeth returned to Windsor Castle each night, exhausted and covered in grease. Her dressers winced when they saw her oil-smudged face and filthy overalls. But Susan always leapt into Elizabeth's arms. The loyal corgi didn't care about her appearance. The prince knew that her beloved pet was proud of her. At last, the war was over. Back at Buckingham Palace, the dogs lived like royalty. They moved into their own special corgi room. At bedtime, they curled up in cozy wicker baskets, raised off the ground to avoid chilly drafts. Their sheets were changed every day. They ate gourmet food prepared by palace chefs. Elizabeth took care of all the dogs. She even made each pet a treat-filled stocking at Christmas. But Susan was the apple of her eye. Not everyone loved Susan as much as the princess did. Ow! The royal clock winder yelped when the dog nipped him on the bottom, ripping a hole in his pants. Out! The king yelled when Susan snuck into the state dining room and stole filet mignon from his plate. Margaret screamed when she stepped on a live mouse that Susan had hidden inside her jeweled slipper. The corgi was often in the doghouse, but Elizabeth always took her side. Twenty-year-old Elizabeth had fallen in love. Philip Mountbatten was handsome and kind, and the future queen was smitten. But before she accepted Philip's proposal, she had to be sure of one thing. Would Susan like him? The corgi snarled at people she didn't care for, but Philip petted her gently. She fell asleep at his feet. Susan approved. Elizabeth's wedding was the most lavish event of the decade. Extravagant gifts arrived from all corners of the globe. They filled an entire room at the palace. Invitations were sent to 2,000 viscounts, VIPs, duchesses, and dames, but the princess's closest companion wasn't on the guest list. Elizabeth's ladies-in-waiting hatched a plan to make Susan a secret part of the celebrations. After the ceremony on November 20th, 1947, the newlyweds rode across London in an elegant glass coach. Hundreds of thousands of well-wishers lined the streets. Their chants were deafening. Adults and children waited for hours, hoping to catch a glimpse of the radiant royal bride. Not one of them realized that Susan was a stowaway in the gilded carriage, hidden beneath a hand-woven rug on the floor. Palace staff had smuggled the dog on board with a stash of special treats and a hot water bottle to keep her warm. While waving at the jubilant crowds, Elizabeth could feel Susan playing at her feet. On the biggest day of her life, she had her best friend by her side. The following year, Elizabeth gave birth to a son, Charles. Susan also became a mom. She had two puppies named Sugar and Honey. The corgis traveled everywhere with the princess and her young family. Susan protected all of the babies in the royal residence. When Elizabeth was only 25, her father passed away. In a grand ceremony, she was crowned Queen Elizabeth II. Millions watched the royal coronation, and the world cheered for the beautiful young monarch. Elizabeth smiled for the cameras. A queen couldn't cry in public, but she sobbed for her papa when she was alone with Susan. Elizabeth soon learned how to be a great ruler. She welcomed people from all nations and faiths into her home. She worked hard to promote kindness and bridge divides. Susan was always by her side. 
But one cold January day, the barking stopped. The queen buried Susan on the grounds of the Sandringham estate, where her playful dog had loved to run and chase pigeons. Elizabeth chose the inscription for Susan's headstone. For almost 15 years, the faithful companion of the queen. No British monarch ruled longer than Queen Elizabeth II. Over the course of her long life and her remarkable 70-year reign, the queen had at least 30 corgi companions. My corgis are family, she has said. 14 generations of her cherished dogs were descended from Susan. Elizabeth never forgot the corgi who helped a young princess learn how to become a beloved queen. Elizabeth and Susan's legacies live on. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at AKC Education. To download the resource featured above, visit our Teachers Pay Teachers store using the link in the description below. See you next time.